Palm Olive Soap, Your Beauty Hope, and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair bring you Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden. While he's not the over-demonstrative type, most of the people who know biology teacher Philip Boynton find him friendly enough. Well, to our Miss Brooks, who teaches English at Madison High School, he's also friendly, but not enough. <laughs> it isn't that Mr. Boynton doesn't have his moments. It's just that I'm never around when he's having them. <laughs> Last Thursday morning, as usual, my landlady, Mrs. Davis, and I were discussing this phenomenon at the breakfast table. I can't understand it, Connie. You and Mr. Boynton have been going together for quite a while now, haven't you? Yes, indeed, Mrs. Davis. Let's see. We started dating the week he got his pet frog, McDougal. That was over two years ago. You mean you two have been going steady for the past two years? That's right, Mrs. Davis. I've been going steady with Mr. Boynton, and he's been going steady with McDougal. <laughs> Those scientists are all alike. So bashful. There must be something you can do to stir him up, Connie. Oh, I've tried everything, Mrs. Davis. I've even backed him into the mix, Master. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> Did you really, Connie? No, but it's not a bad idea. <laughs> Mr. Boynton is a lot like Mr. Mitchell, a scientist who used to take out my sister Angela. She's terribly absent-minded, you know. Yes, I know. <laughs> even more so than my brother Victor. Although heaven knows he's forgetful enough, too. Yes, you've mentioned it to me, Mrs. Davis, but what about Mr. Mitchell? Mitchell? The scientist. What scientist? <laughs> the scientist who took out your sister Angela. Imagine. Angela out with a scientist. And she never even mentioned it to me. <laughs> Maybe she forgot. Forgot? That girl would forget her head if it wasn't tucked under her arm. Uh, this is probably a mistake, but there's something I'd like to clear up. You mentioned, when we were both quite a bit younger, a certain Mr. Mitchell. You said he was a scientist and that he was a lot like Mr. Boynton. He certainly was, Connie. Now, if you've finished with breakfast, I'll clear away the dishes. That's what I like, a story with no loose ends. <laughs> Present company accepted. <laughs> oh, I'll get it, Mrs. Davis. That's probably Walter Denton. He's going to give me a lift to school this morning. All right, Connie. See you after school, dear. Good morning, Miss Brooks. Why, it's Mr. Boynton. Come in. Oh, I haven't time, Miss Brooks. I've got to stop at a laboratory supply house before I get to school. I just wanted to return this notebook. I found it in my lab yesterday. Your lab? Oh, yes. You left it there when you came to pick up the notebook you'd left the day before. <laughs> this is getting pretty obvious. Maybe I'd better start forgetting my gloves. <laughs> I thought you might need it for your first class or I wouldn't have disturbed you so early. Oh, you're not disturbing me, Mr. Boynton. At least not any more than usual. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure you wouldn't like to come in for a minute? Oh, no, thank you, Miss Brooks. I just heard that the supply house I deal with is a new batch of white mice. They just got in from Bolivia. Well, shouldn't you give them a chance to unpack? <laughs> Maybe I could go along with you. I'll just leave word for Walter Denton that I'm riding to school with you. Oh, but I, I'm not driving, Miss Brooks. It's such a beautiful day, I decided to walk. That's what I say. I'll leave word for Walter that I'm walking to school with you. <laughs> you couldn't walk with me, Miss Brooks. I'm much too fast for you. Now, there's a nifty bit of overstatement. <laughs> Besides, you you wouldn't like the atmosphere in a supply house. All those mice and things. Meow. What's that? Oh, oh, it's your cat. Hello, Minerva. She probably wants the address of that supply house. <laughs> Come here, kitty. Meow. Oh, there's a nice girl. Meow. Oh, she sure loves it when I hold her and tickle the back of her neck. Move over, Minerva. <laughs> Here, I'll take her. Now go on inside, Minerva. I'll give you some milk in a minute. Run along now. Mr. Boynton's much too old for you. 
<laughs> you know, seeing Minerva like this reminds me of a joke one of my students told me. A joke? Yes. After class the other day, little Sid Silvers came over to me and said, Mr. Boynton, I know a lady who kisses cats. And I said, she kisses cats? What's her name? And he said, Mrs. Cats. <laughs> What's the matter, Miss Brooks? Did, didn't you get it? Oh, I got it, Mr. Boynton. It's just that I've had all I want of it. <laughs> but I'll be running along now. See, at school, Miss Brooks, you invited me to lunch today, remember? That's right. It's my turn. Last time we went Dutch. <laughs> Who's there? It's me, Mrs. Davis. I haven't gone yet. Oh, then that wasn't Walter Denton at the door. No, it was Mr. Boynton. He just stopped by to give me this notebook and to tell me about a lady who kisses cats. Uh, well, if there are any other ladies kissing cats, I think Mrs. Cat should know about it. <laughs> Please, Mrs. Davis, it's just a joke. It's no joke to Mrs. Cat. After all the years they've been married. Oh, that must be Walter now. Coming! Well, good morning, Walter. It's more than a good morning, Miss Brooks. It's a heavenly morning, an exquisite morning, a delicious morning. Don't wrap it up. I'll eat it here. <laughs> I feel as if I've been dancing on a sunbeam, tiptoeing on a rainbow, and wading through a cloud. Well, wipe your feet and come in a minute. <laughs> oh, hello, Walter. Well, if it isn't Mrs. Davis, lovely Mrs. Davis, scintillating Mrs. Davis, radiant Mrs. Davis. What's the matter with him? I don't know. He just got here. What are you so happy about this morning, Walter? It's L'Amour, Miss Brooks. Wonderful, beautiful L'Amour. Did you get a letter from her? What is all this? It's love, Miss Brooks. I can't sleep. I can't eat. Oh, that's too bad, Walter. I was just going to ask you if you'd like a little breakfast. Oh, what have you got? Well... I could make you some nice waffles. I'm afraid there's no time for that, Mrs. Davis. We've got to get to school. Oh, it's of no consequence. Food is secondary at a time like this. I'll just have a few eggs and some milk. You see, my breakfast was almost an hour ago. Poor kid, you must be starved. <laughs> hey, that reminds me, I've got to give Minerva some milk, too. Let's go all go into the dinette. Hmm? Yeah. Come along, Minerva. Is there anything I can do to help you in the kitchen, Mrs. Davis? No, you just sit right down here and talk to Miss Brooks. And I'll have your eggs ready in a jiffy. Ah, you're a peach, Mrs. Davis. Well, thank you, Walter. She is, Miss Brooks. She's a peach. A wonderful... I know. A wonderful, beautiful, fuzzy old peach. <laughs> now, I wish you'd tell me whence comes this gaiety of spirit. From whence? Oh, from Harriet Conklin. That's whence. Well, she's a pretty nice little whence. <laughs> <laughs> More than nice, Miss Brooks. She's sensational. And boy, what a fight we had yesterday. A fight? Yeah, we almost came to blows. It'll be a long time before we have another fight like that one, boy. Well, what are you so happy about? I thought you were fond of Harriet. I'm crazy about her. I see. You're crazy about her, so you almost came to blows. Hmm? Well, don't you get it? The more bitter the battle, the sweeter it is making up. You mean you actually pick fights just so you can patch it up later? Harriet started this one. It was sheer inspiration. Boy, you should have heard the name she called me. <laughs> name? Why, I don't believe Harriet Conklin would call anyone names, Walter. Oh, it wasn't really Harriet. She was quoting her father. He hates me, you know. <laughs> yes, I know. Besides, a good fight once in a while tends to make couples less sure of each other. A person can't take another person for granted if he or she is belting his or her brains out. <laughs> this boy is another Kirk Douglas. <laughs> Will you excuse me for a minute, Walter? I'd like to get Minerva her milk. Oh, certainly, Miss Brooks. Mrs. Davis? Yes, Connie, I'm just finishing the egg. Walter's just given me a wonderful idea, Mrs. Davis. The trouble with Mr. Boynton and myself is that we take each other for granted. You take each other for granted? With one exception. I don't take him for granted. What I mean is, if I could get him into a good fight, he, he wouldn't be so sure of me. And then, too, think of what fun it would be making up. <laughs> I think you've got something there, Connie. When are you going to pick this fight with Mr. Boynton? At lunchtime today, we have a date to meet in the cafeteria. Good for you, Connie. It just goes to show you, there's more than one way to skin a cat. <coughs> not you, Minerva, <coughs> not you. <coughs> Starring...
starring Eve Arden will continue in just a moment. But first, here is Vern Smith. For bare skin beauty, it's bath size palm olive with its famous beauty lather. Yes, bath size palm olive for loveliness all over. There's something thrillingly new in this wonderful beauty lather of bath size palm olive soap. New fragrance, new charm, new allure. See if palm olive in your daily tub or shower doesn't leave your shoulders, arms, and back. Yes, all of you softer and smoother, completely lovelier all over. You'll thrill to the tender whisper of perfume it leaves on your skin. A whisper that says, come hither to romance. And this new bath size palm olive is so big, so thrifty, economical to use because it lasts so long and gives so much soft, lovely lather so fast. That soft, lovely lather with its alluring new fragrance is palm olive soaps alone. Palm olive's famous beauty lather. Yes, a new fragrance, new charm, new allure that can make every woman a vision of delight in the new revealing fashions that show so much more of you. So remember, for bare skin beauty, it's bath size palm olive with its famous beauty lather. Yes, bath size palm olive for loveliness all over. Get bath size palm olive soap tomorrow. Men folk love it too. <laughs> As soon as the bell rang for lunch, I hastened toward the cafeteria to start the battle of the century with my unwitting adversary, Mr. Boynton. I must have been exceeding the speed limit for Madison's halls, for just as I came abreast of the principal's office, Mr. Conklin flagged me. Well, if it isn't Mel Patton. (laughs) Would you like us to put up some hurdles for you, my dear? I'm sorry, Mr. Conklin. I was just hurrying to get to lunch. Obviously. But I'll have to ask you to make a small detour. Would you mind loping into my office for a moment? Of course, Mr. Conklin. Yeah. Now, sit down, Miss Brooks. I've called you in to find out what you've done about Walter Denton and my daughter Harriet. What I've done, Mr. Conklin? Yes, yes. A few weeks ago, I requested that you move him to the furthest possible spot from Harriet's desk. Oh, I have, Mr. Conklin. They couldn't be any further apart unless one of them transferred to another school. Well, I don't know what Harriet sees in that lame-brained dunce. Oh, he isn't so bad, Mr. Conklin. It's just puppy love with Walter. If I could be sure of that, I'd buy him a lifetime supply of strong heart and build him a kennel with my own hands. (laughs) You should have heard them last night, Miss Brooks. They were on our front porch till almost 11 o'clock. Seems they had an argument in the afternoon, and they spent over three hours cooing and gurgling at each other like a brace of punch-drunk doves. <laughs> well, they were just making up after a little spat. Well, we've got to do something to make that spat a permanent one. That's a pretty tough assignment, Mr. Conklin. Don't you realize that nothing is as sweet as the reconciliation after a lover's quarrel? Why, many couples pick fights just for the fun of making up. Yes, yes. Harriet's mother once started a quarrel with me just to stir up some emotional activity. Now that I think of it, when we did make up, it was rather wonderful. Uh, Perhaps you'd better run along now, Miss Brooks. I have a phone call to make. Oh, Miss Brooks, here I am. Oh, hello, Mr. Boynton. I've been holding this table for us. It's right near the food counter. Well, if you're going to be sarcastic about my being a few seconds late, Mr. Boynton, perhaps I'd better eat by myself. I wasn't being sarcastic, Miss Brooks. I just said... There you go. You just said. You're not interested in anything I might have to say. (laughs) Yes, I am, Miss Brooks. What have you got to say? What made you decide to sit so close to the steam table? Well, you always like to be near the food, Miss Brooks. Oh, that's right. Call me a glutton. (laughs) (laughs) Next thing you'll be saying is that I stuffed myself so much I'm getting fat as a horse. I wouldn't say anything like that, Miss Brooks. You're just getting a little plump. (laughs) What's the matter with you today, anyway? Oh, that's right. Blame it all on me. I come in prepared to have a perfectly friendly lunch, and you immediately start picking on me. I don't know how you can say a thing like that, Miss Brooks. You mean you don't know how a person in her right mind can say a thing like that. That's what you were thinking. Don't deny it. Oh, I get it. This is a rib. (laughs) Say, you sure had me going for a minute there. I may have to bite him. (laughs) Uh, This is 
no rib, Mr. Boynton. Oh, excuse me, folks, but I have a rather important message for Miss Brooks. What is it, Walter? Well, Mr. Conklin wants to see you in his office right away. Oh, it's a shame you have to go now, Miss Brooks. You haven't had anything to eat, and the lunch period's half over. Here, you better have a few of these jelly beans. Jelly beans? Oh, yes, I carry them with me all the time. They're almost pure sugar, you know, and the dextrose contained in them is one of the best sources of quick energy known to science. Here, take a couple. Sweets to the sweet, they say. That is the last insult I'll take from you, Mr. Boynton. Here, you can have my chair, Walter. But, Miss Brooks... I don't know what this is all about, but I'm afraid I've got to interrupt, Mr. Boynton. As manager of the track team, I've called a special practice for after school. I thought you ought to know. Oh, you did. Well, for your information, Denton, as coach of the track team, I'm the only one entitled to call a practice. Oh, gee, you don't have to get so excited about it. I don't tell me how excited to get either. I'm not strict enough with you kids. That's the trouble. Oh, sure you are, Mr. Boynton. I am not. Oh, great. With him, he fights. (laughs) You sent for me, Mr. Conklin? Yes, Miss Brooks, I did. I wanted to report to you the result of my adopting your suggestion. My uh, suggestion? Yes. Yes, acting upon your conversational tip of a few moments ago, I called my wife, Martha, and started an argument with her. Really, Mr. Conklin? Do you think it worked? I think so, yes. Good. Miss Brooks? Yes? Martha has left me. Left you? How do you know? I was afraid I'd gone at it a little strongly in my first call, so after a few minutes, I rang my home again. And? The housekeeper told me that Martha had left the house with a valise. A valise? She did the same thing the last time we quarreled. Took off like a wounded buffalo for her mother's house in Toledo. <laughs> now, if you will stay in my office, Miss Brooks, I'll try to head her off at the railroad station. Oh, but my classes, uh, Miss Put Conklin. Harriet in charge, Miss Brooks. You'll have to wait until I return. Oh, I'm terribly sorry it worked out like this, Mr. Conklin, but... I must say you're showing remarkable self-control. There's no time for recriminations now, Miss Brooks. However, upon my return... I'll flay you! (laughs) Principal's office, Miss Brooks speaking. Oh, hello, Miss Brooks. This is Mrs. Conklin. Mrs. Conklin? Where are you? Well, I'm in the luggage shop, Miss Brooks. I thought Osgood and I might open our cottage at Crystal Lake a little early this year, so I'm having one of my valises repaired. Would you be good enough to call Mr. Conklin to the phone? I'm afraid my voice isn't loud enough, Mrs. Conklin. He's at the railroad station. The railroad station? What's he doing there? Well, he thought you were peeved at him for having been nasty to you on the phone. So when your housekeeper told him you'd left with a valise, he presumed something drastic had happened, like the time you were wounded in Buffalo. (laughs) What? Well, he thinks you're on your way to your mother's house in Toledo. So that's what he thinks. Well, it serves him right. You have no idea how he went out of his way to pick an argument with me, Miss Brooks. Oh, yes, I have, Mrs. Conklin. Well, instead of rushing over to the station and explaining the misunderstanding, I've a good mind to let him cool his heels for a while. Oh, but, Mrs. Conklin, I feel partly responsible for what's happened. I'm sorry if I started... Well, I'm not a bit sorry. A little emotional activity is good for any family. After all, even bees have to stop making honey sometime. I know, but I've started the activity in the wrong hive. (laughs) Well, I'm I'm going back home now, Miss Brooks. Why don't you drop over after school? We'll have a little bull session. Oh, he won't be back by then. I mean, (laughs) I'd love to drop over, Mrs. Conklin. Goodbye. Goodbye. Miss Brooks, I'm surprised at you. Mr. Boynton, I didn't hear the door open. The door was open. I happened to be passing by, and, well, I couldn't help but overhear your conversation with Mrs. Conklin. You heard it? Every word. Oh. Well, I'll have a jelly bean now, Mr. Boynton. (laughs) Frankly, I never dreamed you'd be a party to such a nefarious plot, Miss Brooks. For the first time in my life, I'm really angry at you. You are? Yes, I certainly am. Well. Okay, so you're mad at me. You want to make something out of it, frog boy? Why don't you leap down to the pond and dunk your head under a lily pad? (laughs) So, so you've been spying on me after school. (laughs) Ah, your father's microscope. (laughs) 
Miss Brooks, you've succeeded in stirring up our first quarrel. Why, when I think of our principal wandering around the railroad station, searching vainly for a wife who isn't there, I, I'm appalled. Why, poor Mr. Conklin must be beside himself. Oh, not that, Mr. Boynton. Even Mr. Conklin couldn't stand another Mr. Conklin. <laughs> I'm worried, Miss Brooks. It's almost 9 p.m. and still no word from Osgood. Maybe something's happened to him. Maybe I'll never see him again. Oh, please, Mrs. Conklin, take it easy. Well, how can I take it easy? How would you feel if you thought you were never going to see Osgood again? I rarely indulge in wishful thinking. <laughs> now, when Mr. Conklin gets tired of looking for you, he'll come home. Meanwhile, you must try to be cheerful. Oh, if only Daddy would phone. If only we had some words, some definite... Oh, the doorbell. Maybe it's Osgood. I'll get it. Oh, no, Mother. If it is Daddy, you wouldn't want him to see you with your eyes all red from crying. I'll get it. No, dear. Your eyes are red, too. But, Mother, your eyes are redder than mine. No, dear. Your eyes are much redder than mine. <laughs> you two red eyes will excuse me. I'll open the door. <laughs> Well... Oh, it's you, Miss Brooks. Come in, Mr. Boynton. Mrs. Conklin and Harriet are pretty worried. Please, Mr. Boynton, don't keep us in suspense. Is there any news? Quickly, Mr. Boynton, tell us. Oh, I'm afraid not. I checked the railroad station and the bus terminal, but I saw no sign of Mr. Conklin. Poor Daddy. <laughs> Hold it, Harriet. Wait for your mother. <laughs> Mr. Boynton, did you also check the airport? Yes, I did. He wasn't there either. Oh, poor Osgood. Now both together. <laughs> well, don't just stand there, Mr. Boynton. Pull up a life raft and sit down. <laughs> oh, don't be discouraged, Mrs. Conklin. Maybe Walter Denton will come back with some more tangible news. Oh, I hope he comes soon. This waiting is maddening. Oh, the doorbell. Maybe that's all good. I'll get it. Oh, no, Mother, I'll get it. If it is, Daddy, you wouldn't want him to see you. I've got it. I've got it. <laughs> Hiya, Miss Brooks. Come in, Walter. It's Walter Denton. Hello, Walter. Hello, Mrs. Conklin. Hello, Harriet. Hello, Mr. Boynton. You can call the roll later, Walter. <laughs> now, what's the news? Yes, what did you find out, Walter? Well, I checked the receiving hospital, the emergency hospitals, and also the morgue. And? No luck. <laughs> Maybe that's all good. I'll get it. Oh, no, Mother, I'll get it. If it is, Daddy, you wouldn't want him... Hello, Mr. Conklin's residence. Miss Brooks speaking. How do you do, Miss Brooks? Mr. Conklin. Mr. Mr. Conklin. Yes, Daddy. Oh, good. Must be a five-party line. <laughs> Mr. Conklin, where are you? Where do you think I am? I'm in Toledo. <laughs> where? At the home of Martha's mother, but Martha's not here. Of course she isn't. She's right here. What? Well, put her on at once. Yes, sir, just a minute. He wants to talk to you, Mrs. Conklin. He's at your mother's house in Toledo. In Toledo? Ohio. Toledo, Ohio? Zone 38. Here's the phone. Mrs. Brooks, I, I don't dare tell him that I let him go on that wild goose chase just, just to teach him a lesson. You, you, you know his blood pressure. I ought to. I helped give it to him. Here's the phone, Mrs. Conklin. Talk to him. Oh, thank you. Hello, Osgood. Mother, you're home. <laughs> I don't quite understand. Well, dear, when you picked a quarrel with me today, I really planned to go home to Mother. But I realized I just couldn't bear the thought of leaving you. You, you really mean that, Martha? <laughs> oh, what a lucky man I am. I'll take the first plane back, my dear. It'll be such fun making up. And Martha? Yes, I'll go you can start puckering up now, sugar. <laughs> Why, Osgood. Goodbye, sweetie. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, sugar cookie. <laughs> Isn't that sweet? <laughs> the porch, Harriet. we still got some making up of our own to do. All right, Walter. Now I'm going up to my room and have a good, happy cry. You've earned it, Mrs. Conklin, the day you were married. <laughs> well, Miss Brooks, we seem to have this living room all to ourselves. Shall we go to our corners and come out reconciling? Miss <laughs> <laughs> Brooks, I realize you really did nothing to gain my anger today, and, well, 
In a situation like this, actions speak louder than words. What are you driving at, Mr. Boynton? Miss Brooks, fuck her up. <laughs> yes, Mr. Boynton. And, and close your eyes. Not me. I want to watch. <laughs> Please, close your eyes. All right, Mr. Boynton. There. Well, how did you like it, Miss Brooks? Wonderful, Mr. Boynton. The purple ones are my favorite jelly beans. <laughs> e. Barton, as our Miss Brooks, returns in just a moment, but first... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. Tonight, show him how much lovelier your hair can look after a luster cream shampoo. Only luster cream brings you K. Dumas' magic formula blend of secret ingredients plus gentle lanolin. Gives loveliness lather even in hardest water. Glamorizes your hair as you wash it. Luster cream, not a soap. Not a liquid, but a dainty cream shampoo. Leaves hair fragrantly clean, free of loose dandruff, glistening with sheen, soft, manageable. Gives new beauty to all hairdos or permanents. Four-ounce jar, one dollar. Smaller sizes, either tubes or jars. Tonight, try Luster Cream Shampoo and be a dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. You owe your crowning glory to a luster cream shampoo. And now, once again, here is our Miss Brooks. Well, after Mr. Boynton had fed me all the jelly beans I could swallow, he walked me home through the park. Miss Brooks, there's something I've wanted to say to you all evening. There he is? I didn't want to embarrass you in front of the others, but, well... Yes, Mr. Boynton? The seams of your stockings are crooked. <laughs> Thanks a million, Mr. Boynton. Oh, oh, look, over by that tree, Miss Brooks. It's a pendodactylus, same type of frog as McDougal. Excuse me, Mr. Boynton. Now, you listen to me, you green-skinned, pop-eyed monster. You have a lot of nerve croaking at people at this time of night. This park isn't big enough for both of us, see? Miss Brooks, what are you doing? I'm picking a fight with this frog. It's got to be more fun making up with him. <laughs> Next week, tune into another Our Miss Brooks show brought to you by Palmolive Soap, Your Beauty Hope, and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, written and directed by Al Lewis, with music by Wilbur Hatch. <laughs> Men, here is actual, factual proof of more comfortable, actually smoother shaves by using Palmolive Lather Shaving Cream. 1,251 men tried the Palmolive Lather way to shave, described on the tube. And no matter how they shaved before, three out of four got more comfortable, actually smoother shaves.